Hey, Brian, Joe here, and I'm hoping this is working well. Um, thanks for sending that uh, that video that I looked at, you know, with, uh, with your stuff about kind of the history of the Fed. Um, you know, Brian, I know the history of the Fed, you know. My dad told me about the history of the Fed 40 years ago. And it's actually kind of interesting because if you would have read from 40 years ago the possibly uh, writings of the Fed and their Federal Reserve System, its purpose and functions, or whatever that book is, you know, that <clears throat> uh, you would see how it changed over time. That's what it's saying. But but the point is, Brian, I, I don't need, I don't need that stuff. Okay. Um, Their position on the continental, the continental. And what it comes down to, what it comes down to about the continental is, did the extra printing that they say happened by the governments create the devaluation of the currency? As they say, and this is what they say, and this is what you said, okay? Or did the counterfeiting by the British and whomever else may have counterfeited, okay, result in the devaluation of the currency? Now, it's been noted that the way they printed the kind the, the you know the continentals, that there was may have been, and and, and it's not even documented that the effect, there may have been more continentals printed than, than what was authorized by a minuscule amount, okay compared to the huge amount of known counterfeiting by the British. And when you have two pieces of paper, you know, and when you have a open, overt plan to subvert the currency, the result of which is a devaluation of the currency, you know, to say that it was brought about by the printing, that, that that's that's because those are the people that are on the wrong side of the government versus private money creation issue. And that's that's who the Fed is right now, okay? So you need to be able to take everything that the Fed says with a grain of salt, right? And, you know, with the creation of the Fed and, you know, and, and, and Jekyll Island, you know, if you want to believe, if it sounds feasible to you, that the Fed was created by the Monetary Commission, you know, inviting the bankers in and the bankers testifying this is the... This is the way to do it, to draft the legislation, and that the legislation was not drafted by Aldrich and Rockefeller going down there and bringing the legislative draftsmen and writing it up down there. I can believe that. But you should really do some, you should really do some, uh, some research on, on that subject, okay? Because, because it's, you know, it's silly. It's, it's very silly for us to spend any time on it, right, okay? on that kind of stuff. Well, you can believe whatever you want. We're going to discuss, I hope, you know, eventually, ultimately, private versus public money creation, a debt-based money system versus debt-free money. We can start where we are today. Where we are today. Because this private debt-based money system got us to where we are today, Brian. Okay, nothing else did. You know, I've told you that. I've said the Fed's responsible for this because the Fed has been responsible for 100 years with running the national economy, for determining what's going to be in financial regulation, for acting to protect the interest of the American people, which they have failed at miserably. Okay, so, you know, yeah, the Fed's the problem. You know, the Fed's the problem. The Fed don't get it. The Fed don't get debt money. You know, the Fed don't get the debt money problem. The Fed don't get that we're in a debt deflation uh, you know, scenario. And, and if they do get it, they don't know how to deal with it because they're limited to the debt money system solutions. Okay. So, so that's what we should really be talking about. Now, <coughs> you said to me, I want to get your system straight. You want to take, you want the government to take over the central bank. Hey, the central bank is, you know, it's a, that's an adjunct of the monetary system. Okay. I want to nationalize the monetary system. I want to deprivatize the monetary system. I want to have the government take over the issuance of the money. That's what I want. 
You want to have the take over the central bank. That central banking function is an adjunct of the money system. Okay, who should be doing that? Why should there be? Why should there be a private central bank in a sovereign, a monetarily sovereign, uh, free democratic nation? You know, you know, that issues fiat currencies. You know, why should there be a pri private central bank, Brian? You know. The only thing that you got going for it is history. You know, well, we've got history of 100 years of the private central bank. And we've brought about all this prosperity. No. The, the labor of the people is what brought about all this prosperity. All the, all, the, all the private banking system did was, you know, made it happen somehow. You know, made it happen somehow. So, I'm hoping that what we're going to be talking about is the contrast between the two money systems, at least. You know, private private debt-based money system, a fractional reserve banking. What's wrong with that? And the public government-issued debt-free money system and the problems with that. And compare the benefits of the two and the problems of the two and determine which one is best for the future. To me, if we're not going to do that, then I don't know what we're going to do. Okay? <clears throat> now, you can believe all the Fed's history that you want. You can take all the trips down to the Fed, you know. You don't forget you're paying for that, Brian. <clears throat> and, you know, they can PR you, you know, up and down. And believe me, I know that they're great at their PR, and especially they're great with their largesse, because some really good friends of mine, you know, have uh, moved in the direction of, you know, working with the Fed, you know, working with the Fed. Although they're doing it mostly on the level of uh, implementing the Community Reinvestment Act provisions to see that uh, to see that the Fed requires the banks to be lending in neighborhoods that the banks would rather redline and not lend in, um, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, once they're with the Fed, you know, they're there. They go to all the Fed's, you know, occasions. Um, <coughs> So again, I don't want, and then you say to have the money, then, and after you say to, to, to nationalize, or not nationalize, but uh, have the government take over the central bank, you say, and to have the government print money for projects. Well, I, I print money for projects? No, I print money for projects. The government creates the money, okay? How does that happen? It happens in the budgeting process, okay? Are there projects in the government budgeting process? You betcha. And what's the government project? Budget made up is made up of, uh, of, of, of service providing to, uh, to, 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 to to people who need it, like my social security check. Okay, <coughs> is that a project? You know, or it's money that goes to build highways and bridges and, and, and things like that. You know, or I don't want to say too much about the military, but you know, it's whatever's in the government's budget. There's nothing special about the government prints money for projects. It's whatever's in the government's budget. 25% of new money creation under the percentage bill, under the the, the, the debt-free, you know, option goes directly to the states. Now, well, nothing could be more democratic than that, because your state, Brian, hopefully, you know, under a, a properly functioning administration, is going to ensure that that 25% of the new money goes to what's really needed in your state. And I hope that includes your education system. Okay, but that's the function of 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 uh, of government at another level, at the state level, receiving, sharing the money creation powers with the state, so as the states gave up the money creation powers when you know when uh, the federalism you know uh, came into being in, the, in its form, is a uh, uh, I would call I call it a normalizing relationship with the states because the states have so many needs and so limited ability to meet them that the, the federal government should share. You know their their money creation powers with the states, and that's what happens in the percentage bill. So it's not for projects; it's just for the it's just for the budget. Now, is it not clear how that happens? And 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 this thing about you know giving that power to the government, you know, giving that power. Are we worried about giving that power to the government? Yeah, because the government's been corrupted by this debt-based money system where the bankers have all the money and they can buy the government. You know, they can buy the government with their money creation powers. Yeah, that worries me. Okay. But it doesn't worry me as much as perpetuating the this, this same system. What we've done 
is taken away from the uh, 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 bankers. Uh, I'm sorry, taken away from the government. Uh, the ability to determine how much money is in existence and where and where it goes, okay? Because all of that's going to happen at, where it goes happens after it's created, okay? And how much is in existence becomes by statute, okay? By statute, taken, you know, that power, that you know, manipulation power away. Let's have a lot of money because it's an election year. Can't, can't. You know, Golden Weiser, in his book on American monetary policy, addresses this matter of the corruption of the of the influence of politicians over over money, and and is very clear in the greatest study and the number one textbook on the subject. You know, in the uh, throughout you know a long extended period of time, and he says, no, the influence goes the other way. It's not the influence of government over bankers. It's the influence of bankers over government, and that's how we got into this mess. Okay. So we got Graham, Leach, Bliley, okay, you know, and all that stuff and all that deregulation that the Fed did nothing to prevent and, and in fact enhanced, you know, Brian. So you want to understand how the money system works? Stop. Read the Kucinich bill. Ask me questions about how the Kucinich bill will work, Brian, okay? And then let's talk about how that, and contrast it to how the present money system works. And then we can talk, and I feel like then maybe we can accomplish something. But I'm not that interested in going back and hearing, you know, the regurgitations of the Fed after, you know, after this extended period of time of them being in control of the money system and getting us into this hole that we're in right now. And any of them who say that we didn't do it, you know, well, oh, that was the investment in shadow banking community that built up all of that structured investment crap that tore down when it came down the commercial banking system and therefore the national economy. And gee, you know, we had nothing to do with that except that we let it happen, except that they let it happen. You know, my question to <coughs> Bullard at the Minsky conference, you know, that he claimed to not uh, purported to not understand. No, the Fed is responsible for it. You know, why well, put that question to them? You know, where was the Fed? And I'll say, oh, that was only because that was Chairman Greenspan. B.S. B.S. Who's on the Fed's? Who's on, who's on the Fed committees that determines policies? Who are these people? So, so you see, what we need to have is a money system that rather than serve as the commodity function, okay, going to its highest return, serves as the means of exchange for the national economy, is available to serve as the means of exchange. And the only way that you can ensure that happens is if the government introduces the money into existence by spending it into existence, and it goes into the M1 directly and immediately upon creation. And it's there as available as a means to... To, uh, to provide for a high um, uh, uh, activity of, of turning over uh, commerce. Uh, you know, these are, these are the issues, Brian. You know, you need to come to understand how the money system works more than to understand how the Fed has done things for the last 100 years and defending what the Fed has done for the last 100 years because it's indefensible. You know. Anyway, Brian, I hope I've addressed, uh, you know, the points that you made um, and that we can make progress. Thank you.